Jibreel alayhi salam advising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It's an authentic hadith. Outside of his capacity of delivering the wahi. And we know that because he says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad. And when Jibreel alayhi salam is addressing him this way, he's showing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, look, this is advice from me to you. Subhanallah, the best of the angels giving advice to the best of human beings and the best of all creation. Ya Muhammad. And he wants to give Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa some advice. He says, Ish ma shit fa inna kamayyit. Live however you want to, but know that you're one day going to die. Wahbid ma shit fa inna kamufariq. Love whoever you want, but know that you're going to be taken away from that person. You're going to be separated from that person. Either they're going to die first or you're going to die first. Or long distance, whatever it is. You're going to be separated from that person. Do whatever you want, but know that you will be granted exactly what you have done. You will find on the Akhirah the reward for your deeds. Right? You will find the payment of your deeds. So go ahead and act and do the deeds that you want to do. But know that one day you have to be held accountable for them. And listen to these last two advices, and this is what I want to focus on because of the, 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 you know, the shortage of time. He says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنِ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَعِزَّهُ إِسْتِغْنَاؤُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ He says, know that the nobility of a believer is his standing up in Qiyam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His nobility and his sense of dignity is being independent of people. SubhanAllah. Listen to how powerful this advice is when you take them together. Know that the nobility of a believer is his standing up in Qiyam al-Layl. Praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, telling to Allah, telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what Allah already knows, but in a way of placing his dependence upon him. And his sense of dignity is being independent of the people. Now, this is something that's problematic because if you if you take that last statement in particular, does that mean that we can't ask for help? Does that mean that we shouldn't, you know, if we're in a bind, we can't ask other people to help us out? To an extent, yes. To an extent, yes. Because Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, بَيَعْتُ النَّبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أَلَّا أَسْأَلَ النَّاسَ شَيْئًا I took an allegiance, a pledge to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم never to ask anyone for anything. Now of course Abu Bakr is a special person who has an elevated standard, right? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم sets a different standard for him. But the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, الْيَدُ الْعُلْيَا قَيْرٌ مِنَ الْيَدِ السُّفْلَى that to have the upper hand is always better than having the lower hand. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Uliya, he had munfiqa. The Uliya, the higher hand is the one that's giving. The one that's always giving. Was sufla, he has sa'ila. And the lower hand is the one that's always asking. Sometimes you're in a bind. Sometimes you need help. Sometimes you need to go to people. And whether it's emotional or it's financial or whatever it is, sometimes you have to ask people for help. But a person should try his best to put all of his needs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to abandon what people have. And that's a problematic concept because then you say, well, wait a minute, how are we going to know who's poor? How are we going to know? Does that mean that we can't give sadaqah? What about zakah? What about sadaqah? And this is the perfect system that Islam created. That the Muslim who has is supposed to go look for the one who needs. And there's a difference between being in need and not going out and begging the people and becoming vulnerable and saying, help me, help me, help me. Between that type of person and a person who's in need and other people can see that and they come to him or her to help. There's a total difference, unfortunately, because of the imperfection of the way that our society is set up. Obviously, we can't apply that wholeheartedly. So sometimes, yes, you have to ask. But let's talk about emotional vulnerability. You know, subhanAllah, whenever you become dependent on one person or you become dependent on a group of people, you are at their mercy. SubhanAllah, you weaken yourself. You start to have a low self-esteem. You start to have a defeated mentality. And you get used to being a bum. You know the whole saying of teach a man how to fish or give him a fish? You give him a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a year. Right? You get used to that sometimes. You get used to, oh man, I'm having a rough day. I need to go talk. I need to complain to this person. I need to call up this person. Oh, I need money. I need. I know I can always go to this person. I know I can always go to that person. And you're complaining. And you're making yourself vulnerable and weak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah wants to make things easy for you. And Ibn Rajab rahimahullah, he says very beautifully, 
He says that people go to the door of this person and that person and that person, this malik and that malik, this king or that king. But Malikul Muluk, the king of kings, has his door always open for you. And you only go there in times of tragedy. No! When you develop a habit of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in a way, not in a way that expresses displeasure with them. And a shakwa as Imam al Qayyim rahimahullah is one of the most beloved forms of dua. It's the dua of Ya'qub alayhi salam, Ashku huzni wa bathi ila Allah. I'm not going to worry about you. I'm going to complain about my grief and my sadness to Allah. You know what I'm going through, but I'm going to, I'm going to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayyub alayhi salam. All of the stuff that happened to him, he complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was shakwa. But the way he complains, Masani al wa anta arhamur rahimin. Oh Allah, my Lord, harm has struck me, and you're the most merciful of those who have mercy. Just a few words. It showed his attitude with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, you know about my situation. And you know, it's good to talk about your situation with Allah because we as human beings naturally, we like to talk about our problems. We like to talk about what we're going through. Dear brothers and sisters, a person finds pride only by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a person finds true self-worth and security only by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said in the famous statement when he entered into Al-Quds, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ أَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ وَإِنْ اَبْتَغَيْنَ الْعِزَّةَ لِغَيْرِهِ أَذَلَّنَ اللَّهُ We are a people who Allah gave dignity to through Islam. And that statement has so many dimensions. If we seek it through anything else, we will only be humiliated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only cause us to be amongst those who are humiliated. Whether it is for your emotional needs or your physical needs, Try turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consistently or else you will feel the heat of this life because that's how we're programmed. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيسَةً ضَنْكَ Whoever turns away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a constricted life. Life is going to suffocate you. Your job, your relationships, everything is going to feel suffocating because you're eventually going to run out of people to call upon. And eventually the person that you keep on calling, even though he might love you and he might respect you and he might you know, have your best interests at heart, eventually when you keep calling and he keeps p- picking up the cell phone or she keeps p- picking up the cell phone and seeing that same name, they're going to start making excuses. You know, put, putting out the paper bag and you'll, Whoosh, I'm busy, I'm in a halaqa. They might even start lying to say, I don't want to talk to you right now. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who's both capable and willing to help you at any time. And think about this, and Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, and I'll end with this. In this life, you'll find someone who's capable of helping you, but he won't be willing to help you. Right? There are people that are multi, multi, multi millionaires, and I don't care what kind of financial hardship you're going, going through. You could go to that person, if they wrote you a check, it wouldn't affect them much. They wrote you a check, they could take care of you for the next 10 years. You never have to worry about your financial troubles again, but they're not willing to help you. And there are some people that are always willing to help you, but they're not capable of helping you, right? Your mother loves you. Your mother wants you to be a rich person. Your mother wants you to have everything in life. Your mother wants you to be the president, to be this and to be that. But she won't be capable of giving it to you. But Allah is both willing and capable at all times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unlike people who get upset when you keep on calling them, مَن لَا يَسْأَلِ اللَّهِ يَغْضَبُ عَلَيْهِ The Prophet ﷺ says, whoever doesn't ask Allah, Allah becomes angry with him for not asking of him. For not asking of him. So develop that relationship, strengthen that relationship, direct your concerns towards him, and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make, make a way out for you. As Imam al-Shafi rahimahullah says, إِنَّ الْوُقُوفَ عَلَى الْأَبْوَابِ حِرْمَانُ To stand at the doors of people is a way of forbidding yourself. Right? It's a way of depriving yourself. And he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, إِنَّ الْوُقُوفَ عَلَى الْأَبْوَابِ حِرْمَانُ وَالْعَجْزُ أَنْ يَرْجُوَ الْإِنسَانُ إِنسَانَ And disability and laziness and incapability is that a human being needs another human being. فَمَتَى تُؤَمِّنُ مَخْلُوقًا وَتَقْصُدَهُ So when do you put all of your hope and all of your trust into another created being and expect that he's going to get you out of your situation? إِنْ كَانَ عِنْدَكَ بِالرَّحْمَانِ إِيمَانُ when you have Iman and Ar-Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَثِقْ بِالَّذِي يُعْطِي ذَا وَيَمْنَعُ ذَا So then put your trust in the one who gives to this one and he forbids this person. Because at the end of the day, وَفِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَانُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning our day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr is precise and daily. And, uh, and, and, and as he said, رحمه الله تعالى, that whoever has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for him.